Welcome to Deep Dive Defense. Over here we give rare insights you won't hear elsewhere. Today's topic is Iran's new Etamad 2000 km range medium range ballistic missile. Equipped with a precision strike maneuverable re-entry vehicle. Quantity wise, it has been Iran's main missile for striking Israel. This recent variant of the Imad ballistic missile was developed in response to a covert United States capability that was employed for the first time during Iran's initial missile operation against Israel, Operation True Promise 1. Given that the EMAD is, by the contemporary standards of Iran's missile forces, an older design, it depended on a satellite navigation course update to provide it with a precision strike capability. However, during Operation True Promise 1 in April 2024, the navigation systems of the EMAD missiles, launched back then, were spoofed and diverted off their intended course. This outcome surprised the Iranians, who had conducted the launches from locations far from their borders, where no jammers, whether ground-based or airborne, were close enough to affect the EMAD missiles. It is believed that a covert space-based satellite navigation jamming capability exists within a satellite constellation about which no information is publicly available. Iran itself became aware of this capability only after observing the missed impacts by the EMAD missiles. A result which stood in contrast to the more advanced Kbar Shikan era ballistic missiles. These were launched in much smaller numbers but had not to rely on satellite navigation for their precision strike capability. After this covert advantage was exploited by Israel through its ally the US, Iran initiated a substantial effort to upgrade the existing EMAD missile arsenal. The upgrade involved integrating a new satellite navigation receiver capable of detecting jamming and spoofing attempts, sorting out the false signals, and selectively receiving the authentic positional data to update the missile's guidance system. This update is believed to occur shortly before booster burnout, at an altitude of approximately 100 kilometers, in space, previously thought to be remote enough to exclude the possibility of adversary interference. Rather than executing a costly overhaul of the EMAD's missile guidance system, the new Etamad missile was instead fitted with a Controlled Reception Pattern Array, or CRPA, Satellite Navigation Receiver. This system can null or eliminate several jamming sources and concentrate its reception towards the authentic navigation satellite signals. This system first gained recognition in its initial four antenna variant, named Nazir, which was used on the now famous Shahed-136 one-way attack drone. The CRPA system has since been upgraded to a more sophisticated receiver, featuring a greater number of antennas and enhanced complexity, to guarantee that the course update received by the Etamad is dependable under the demanding war conditions fought with a superpower level opponent. The precision that the relatively low-cost EMAD missiles achieved about six months later during Operation True Promise 2 in October 2024, demonstrated that the Iranians were successful and that the US and Israeli side had lost a key one-time use covert asset. Interestingly, Russian Iskander aeroballistic missiles were also observed being upgraded with CRPA receivers during their use in the Ukraine war. It is believed that this relatively simple upgrade is being retrofitted to the existing, vast EMOD arsenal, including both the first version with the heavy 1,000kg biconical warhead, and the newer, longer-range 2,000-kilometer-range triconic maneuverable re-entry vehicle, MARV, variant. With a circular error probable of 70 meters under jamming conditions, the Etamad missiles launched by Iran during the 12-day conflict with Israel in 2025 had devastating effects. Despite being less precise than the Kbar Shikan 1 and 2 missiles with their significantly more precise inertial guidance systems. Interestingly, Israel's attacks on Iran's solid propellant missile production infrastructure by striking a critical bottleneck, namely their propellant mixers, demonstrated to Iran how important liquid propellant missiles like the Etamad are. Their capability to be safely produced inside underground facilities is critical for the wartime production of such important weapons. The passive hardening of Iran's liquid propellant missile production infrastructures, which are situated within hard rock tunnels, meant that Israel did not even attempt to strike any targets associated with the liquid propellant production industry. They instead concentrated on hitting the mixers necessary for solid propellant missile production to temporarily halt their booster production. Now let's look at the details and history of Iran's EMAD missile, 
which forms the basis for the Etimad modification. Like and subscribe if you want to support the channel in the algorithm. Now let's start. The EMAD medium range liquid propellant ballistic missile, developed in the early 2010s, is believed to have entered operational service around 2014. Essentially, it is a significantly improved variant of the Goddard F with notable design changes. The most significant being the addition of an endo-atmospheric maneuverable re-entry vehicle, MARV. The fuel mixture remains the same as in the Goddard F, using UDMH fuel and N2O4 oxidizer, which retains the same temperature limitations of not above around 20 degrees Celsius, making the missile ideal for operation from hardened, cool, underground missile bases. The missile can be launched from mobile launchers just outside the tunnel entrance for quick deployment, or from Iran's unique launch pit and barrage launch concept. This concept involves a deep underground tunnel system, built into the hard rock of a mountain with a rail system that uses automatic launch wagons. Five EMADs are placed on each rail wagon launch system and driven to a highly hardened and shield cavern opening, allowing launches from a highly protected position, making the launch sites immune to most conventional weaponry targeting them. The EMADs booster stage closely resembles that of the Gajar F, but a visible difference is the placement of the retro rocket boosters for thrust termination, velocity trim, and warhead separation. These are now located at the rear, near the motor, to avoid interference with the MARV and its fins. The EMAD follows a conventional minimum energy trajectory with a direct ballistic descent of the maneuverable re-entry vehicle, which re-enters at around Mach 11, necessitating the MARV avionics to endure high g-forces during the deceleration which occurs. It is believed that the MARV uses a rather simple MEMS-based inertial measurement unit, while the missile itself is guided by a dynamically tuned gyroscope-based inertial measurement system during the boost phase. This allows the MARV to correct for wind influences and so vastly improve targeting accuracy. Although the EMAD may not have evasive maneuvering capabilities, it is a precision missile designed for point strikes against adversaries with limited ballistic missile defense capabilities or whose defenses have been degraded by other, more advanced missiles. The EMAD boasts a destructive power which is among the highest of Iranian missiles, carrying nearly a one-ton warhead over a range of 1,750 kilometers. By the early 2020s, a second variant of the EMAD appeared, featuring a smaller maneuverable re-entry vehicle of about 750 kilograms weight, extending its range to about 2,000 kilometers. The EMAD has replaced the Goddard family since the mid-2010s, indicating its production volume is quite high, given the vast production infrastructure of the Goddard. These missiles are attractive to Iran because they can be stored in an unfueled state, securely for decades, with minimal maintenance, reducing the risk of leakage and explosions. While Iran's solid-fuel missiles are more compact and possibly more affordable initially, if the complete life cycle is considered, the EMAD may still be comparatively cost-efficient. The ongoing production of EMAD missiles is maintained because they can effectively target and destroy well-hardened structures across the region, often beyond the reach of conventional adversary air power to disrupt operations. The heavy direct descent MARV possesses high kinetic energy upon impact, increasing its impact penetration performance. At the time of EMAD's development around 2010, Israel had not yet deployed the Exo-Atmospheric Aero-3 Ballistic Missile Defense System. To overcome Israeli missile defense systems like Aero-2 and Patriot, the EMAD may well have incorporated simple periodic evasive maneuvers upon re-entering the atmosphere. While not as effective as more complex pseudo-random maneuvers over a large portion of the terminal trajectory, such small evasive maneuvers can decrease the hit probability. With the Aero-3 system now operational, EMAD's task of penetrating Israeli defenses has become more challenging. Iran employs inflatable decoys for missiles with MARV and aerodynamic fins, which are only effective in vacuum, making them ideal candidates for EMAD's lightweight decoy solution. It is believed that the EMAD deploys several such inflatable decoys in chaff and or aerosols during mid-course phase and just before re-entering the atmosphere. This technique is used to confuse missile defense sensors and counter exo-atmospheric systems like the Aero-3. During the April 2024 strikes, 
some Israeli Aero 3 or US SM3 interceptors might have been deceived to targeted such decoys, if there was difficulty in distinguishing between decoys and real MARV. The high-end radars like the AN-TPY-2, deployed by the United States and Israel, are essential for effective discrimination in such situations, where decoys are used extensively. The empty spent boosters of the EMADs launched against Israel are often interpreted as intercepted missiles. But shrapnel damage pattern of the harmless objects indicates that some were erroneously classified as targets by Israel's missile defense sensor. Hence, the separated boosters have likely a decoy effect for the EMAD. They also burn up spectacularly during nighttime when shortly behind the actual warheads, often mistaken to be malfunctioned re-entry vehicles. In summary, despite its large size and origins in the Soviet R-17 Scud missile, the Edamat remains an attractive product for Iran's IRGC Aerospace Force. This is mainly due to the Soviet Scud's emphasis on producibility, resulting in a relatively simple and cost-effective design, although the Edamat might eventually be replaced by the more advanced and expensive Koromshar family based on the R-27 submarine-launched ballistic missile, it remains in production, similar to the continued production of AK-47 variants worldwide. Compared to its long-term replacement, the Koromshar, its payload capacity is around half of it, but also costs significantly less. For Iran, whose ballistic missiles are equipped with conventional warheads and must meet cost-effectiveness criteria, the key factors are warhead weight, range, system cost, and overall life cycle costs. Within this doctrinal constraints, the Edamad performs quite well. The vast majority of medium-range ballistic missiles used against Israel during the 12-day conflict were the comparably low-cost Emad missiles retrofitted to the Edamad standard. It is believed that Iran's vast arsenal of Emad missiles will be quickly updated to the Edamad standard if this has not already happened. Therefore, the status of the Edamad missile within Iran's ballistic missile force structure and its vast stocks mean that it will continue to play a prominent role inside the IRGC aerospace missile force structure. So that's all for today. If you liked it, give a thumbs up, comment, and subscribe. It really makes a difference in the YouTube algorithm and is a great support to the channel. The real enthusiast can become members and given access to exciting membership area material. Thanks for your support and motivation. See you next time.